Dunlap Hill in Macon, Georgia is a historically significant site as it was used by the Okmulgee Indians between 800 and 1500 AD by soldiers during the Civil War as farmland up to the early 1900s and finally as a public historical site with modern public works traversing the ground. From the air we see none of this historical context. So the question before us is, how can we glimpse into the past and get an accurate survey of the site without ever using a shovel and getting results like this? My name is Ross Johnson. I'm Vice President of the Magnetometer Division at Geometrics. From its earliest inception, Geometrics has been involved in archaeological survey using geophysical tools. One of the first uses of the magnetometer was in locating Olmec heads in Mexico. These were prehistoric, pre-Columbian monuments that were discovered by our founder, Sheldon Briner, using a vapor magnetometer. So the importance to geometrics of doing archaeological type surveys has been present through its entire 44 years. So we were particularly pleased to be able to contribute to this effort and to this research so that we could show the importance of using uh, high-speed surveillance techniques for archaeological site investigation. Akmugui uh, National Monument is located in Macon, Georgia. It is a uh, Native American uh, settlement that started back in the Clovis about 13,000 uh, 13, uh, years ago. Uh, there has been uh, continual habitation and abandonment uh, since that time up until the Civil War era. There is evidence of the Clovis uh, 13,000 years ago. Um, the time frame that we're interested in is the uh, Mississippian, which is about 900 AD to about 1200 uh, AD. Um, this is when earthen mounds were uh, built up. They range from a couple meters tall to 15 meters tall in some some cases and it was really the the point of the project is really to see if these mounds were interconnected if the space in between was used as habitation the geophysics was prompted mostly from uh, archaeological uh, excavations that were uh, carried out back in the 1930s by Arthur Kelly it was funded by the uh, New Deal which was <clears throat> a way to get people back to work uh, during the Great Depression. It, um, there was up to about 800 uh, amateur archaeologists, um, rather rudimentary archaeology being taken place there. And a lot of the historical evidence has been lost. The context has been lost mostly because people weren't documenting things correctly. Uh, poor archaeological uh, practices were, were being carried out. So this, this project was really to, to gain a better sense of the historical context and see if we could um, uh, map out where these archaeological excavations were taking place and see if we can get a better understanding of the Akmulji uh, civilization as it is. One of the primary advantages of using optically pumped cesium vapor magnetometers is its high speed sampling rate. This enables the magnetometer to sample very densely along the track, providing us with more detailed information about the anomalies associated with the archaeological targets. So the archaeological targets are typically small in feature, and therefore the high-speed sampling of the magnetometer allows us to see individual targets clearly. So the G858 was deployed as a horizontal gradiometer uh, with the magnetometer sensors spaced at about a meter apart. They were uh, deployed on a cart system to keep them at a relatively uh, similar am uh, altitude above the ground as he walked across the uh, 37 acres of land. The magnetometer was mostly used as a large-scale reconnaissance to see where the areas of use were for further investigation with other instruments such as GPR and conductivity, which are a little bit slower and, and require a little more detail. Uh, this project encompassed about 37 acres. Um, you can survey that with most instruments, at least with the magnetometer, in about a week or two weeks' time. Uh, for excavation, if you were to do that, it would take many, 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 many years, um, maybe decades even, to fully understand the entire area. 
we're able to, to survey and understand things uh, without actually disturbing the soil, which for Native Americans tends to be an issue. They, uh, their cultural and, and belief system uh, tends to want to um, not dig or, or disrupt their ancestors. They, they tend to have a lot of, a lot of problems with that, um, especially uh, disturbing the sp their uh, ancestors' spirits in a way. So this, this really allows us to get on Native American lands and actually survey and, and understand their way of life without actually disrupting their, their beliefs and their cultural identity. The work was done by Dan Bigman as part of his dissertation for his PhD from the University of Georgia. Um, he used several different instruments including the Geometrix G858, uh, a radar system, electrical conductivity and electrical resistivity to map out the geophysical properties of the, of the ground to see if he could find the, the household structures or the habitation zone of this, uh, of this settlement. Visible in the site are certain industrial type anomalies associated with pipelines. In particular, we can see the uh, highly variated plus and minus signatures of pipeline joints. So along the upper right hand corner of the survey, we see the uh, signature, the clear signature of uh, perhaps a uh, uh, irrigation type pipeline. So this is really going to be a, a more modern structure. It's not reminiscent of anything that is uh, Native American or, or old earth kind of, uh, kind of features. Uh, also in the uh, central area in the upper quadrant, we see crisscrossing pipeline signatures, probably from older pipes uh, that, that contain less steel and may in fact have uh, some sort of uh, brick or other types of materials since they are not as clearly defined as the high amplitude steel pipeline signature. In addition, in the upper right hand corner, we see a large anomaly associated most likely with some sort of utility. This could be a cistern or some sort of tank, buried tank, which gives a large positive anomaly associated with the steel material. Moving down into the center of the image, we see a, an anomaly associated with the farmhouse. Again, a large positive and a large negative anomaly. The positive portions being red in color, the negative portions being blue in color. These are associated with the concentration of the Earth's magnetic field due to the susceptibility and the magnetic materials in the farmhouse itself. In the lower central area of the map, we see a cluster of anomalies which may be associated with the actual Okmulgee burial mound. Uh, this could be Native American use area. This could be an excavation unit where there was um, uh, utensils and tools that were thrown back into the pile to uh, create a large contrast because archaeologists tend to use metallic things or uh, magnetic uh, materials, iron, uh, trowels, and those kind of things, which could, could have ended up in the excavation unit. It seems to be, it looks like it might be a little um, squarish, which is um, typical of an archeology span um, excavation unit. It could be traces from the Civil War. Uh, there were Civil War um, battles in this area and uh, troops were, were stationed here at some point so it could also be Civil War era um, remains. Common anomalies associated with burial mounds might include disrupted earth. So in general when there are excavations for burial plots or burial mounds we see a lot of small anomalies associated with the actual disruption of the magnetic, the, co the common magnetic domain in the material itself. So simply excavating the earth can cause an anomaly due to the disruption of the material in that area. So the, the project was successful in that it, it accurately mapped out the uh, Akmulji uh, settlement. It found several different uh, housing structures um, and that it did it in a short amount of time and non-invasively as to not uh, disrupt the <clears throat> disrupt the soil and disrupt the, the archaeological context.